So given that this point is something that's discussed quite a bit in Taiji practice, and it does have a role to play, let's talk a little bit about the role of this point in the foot, since the role is definitely not weight-bearing of the foot. So one of the important points that the Yongchuan point plays in Taiji, and specifically with what's going on with the foot during Taiji training, we'll say that the point is uh, from the toes probably somewhere about here on the bottom of the foot. So let's think about this idea of keeping this point hollow. To keep that hollow, to keep it from like pressing down into the ground when your foot is kind of melting into the ground, you need a little bit of an upward pull here. And what that does is it allows you to activate your toes so that they grip the floor without super gripping the floor. So you, what you don't want to do is have your toes like death grip the floor and really hang on tight. But what you do want to do is have a pull up so let's say probably about here we'll again say that my hand is a foot and about here is where the yongchuan point is and that's pulling up and to pull that up i need to activate the foot underneath and it's allowing the foot to grip the floor without super gripping the floor so it's kind of a point where you focus to allow your body to do a thing without overdoing that thing and the thing that we're wanting to do is have the foot stick to the ground, you can think of it almost as a suction cup. If you've ever used those toy arrows with the suction cup ends and they stick to something, when you pull up on the arrow, we'll just go ahead and draw it. So we have one of those darts and it has a suction cup at the end. When it sticks to something, that suction cup flattens out, right? So it looks more like this. And if you pull up on that, as you pull up, you get kind of this arch shape. And as you do that, you see that the edges stay flat and it pulls up in the middle, and this suction cup is like pulling against the surface as you pull up. Think of that kind of a force at the Yongchuan point pulling up, and as that's coming up, it's causing the foot to kind of grip the floor the way a suction cup would and stick to the floor. So try that with your own feet. Try focusing on that point and doing a drawing up there and see how that allows your foot to grip the floor and see how that's different from if you just leave your foot on the floor and just use your toes to try to grip the floor. You'll find that when you're just using your toes to just grip the floor, that what happens is it adds a lot more tension all through the foot, all the way up the calf, all the way up the leg. So you just engage a whole lot more muscles when you're just thinking about gripping the floor. But when you have this upward intention right there, and it's not like an uprooting intention where you're pulling your foot off the ground, it's a drawing into the center. So we'll come back to this picture and we'll say that their Yong Chuan point is somewhere here. So what happens here is there's a drawing up through this spot here and even from here. So it's like the foot's being pulled up there, but it's not the foot being pulled off the ground. It's this drawing up that's causing the foot to suction to the ground and creates a more solid connection to the ground. So physically, this point is really somewhere where you focus. As I said before, to get your body to do something without overdoing that something, and you can tell that difference, and it takes a little bit of practice to practice drawing up here versus just gripping the ground with your toes when you're thinking about gripping the ground with your toes. And something that you want to avoid is that active gripping of the ground because that adds tension, and it's gonna stiffen up your ankle, and it's gonna make you more rigid and like we talked about in the um, relaxation videos that's going to play against you but with this intention you can get a more stable connection to the ground by this drawing up idea at the yong chuan point so this point's role is really kind of the opposite of what it's commonly taught additionally this point is the beginning of the kidney meridian and so this is an energetic connection point to the ground too. If you don't believe in meridians, chi, all of that, that's fine. This is just information for you, one other perspective that you can use for this. And I don't think it's its primary role necessarily in Tai Chi training, um, especially if you're looking at the martial application of Tai Chi. Really the drawing up and the anchoring of the foot to the ground like a suction cup is more the role in the just purely martial aspects. But if you're looking at Tai Chi for exercise, um, fitness, personal development, meditation, those types of things, and you're looking more at the energetic side of Tai Chi, then this point is also important for that same kind of drawing up action. So again, it's not typically a pushing down point. It's a drawing up into that's connecting you to the energy of the earth. And you can again see how that would, if we say, okay, this energy is actually physically drawing the earth up to you, if you have 
the planet down here. This is a very big thing, right? So you drawing that up isn't actually going to pull it up towards you. It's going to pull you down onto it, right? So the thing that's being drawn up is actually, you know, the, the difference in these forces is actually kind of drawing you further onto that surface. And so again, even with that idea, it adds to the stability of the situation rather than changing your frame in a way that decreases your stability. Now this is the same weight distribution that you would use while you're doing uh, John Zhuang Qigong or standing post Qigong. And that, if you're not used to this weight distribution where the weight's focused here and you have a drawing up here with that suction cup foot action on the floor, then I would highly recommend that you start practicing this with your John Zhuang rather than trying to put it into your forms because that's going to be a lot more complicated. And that's one of the main uses of John Zhuang is fixing errors in structure and getting things lined up like they're supposed to be so that that can be translated into the form. And that's why Chen Xiaowang says that um, standing post Qigong is the first form because that's really where you get your basics and your alignments taken care of. And it can also be where you fix errors in your alignment. So if you're used to having your weight shifted out here, trying to shift it back during your form is gonna be kind of, kind of difficult, especially if you have a lot of muscle memory in. So what I would recommend is start with John Zhuang and get your weight here and use this as the drawing up point. And I think that's really going to change your relationship with this point when you try that, because at some point this is going to open up or activate, however you want to think about it. But this point's going to become active in a way where you're aware of it. And it's going to feel completely different than probably anything you've experienced before. So I highly recommend that you try this weight distribution here during John Zhuang training and just be aware of what's going on there and be ready for a very cool experience. And when you have that experience, I think it will help you understand why this point is called the bubbling well. So one way that you could describe the relationship between these areas of the foot is that this is sort of your energetic root. So this is your energetic connection to the ground. This is really your physical root. So forces coming in are directed here, physical forces that are coming through. Um, energetically, this is where you're drawing that energy up and through the foot here and allowing that to pull the foot into that suction formation. For a long time, I used to let my students do kind of either of these because I had been taught both ways. I had been taught that the weight distribution back here, I had also been taught weight distribution forward. And that's a really common thing to be taught. And one master says this, one master says that. And I feel like that's a really big benefit of having more than one instructor to learn from is you see a bigger picture of what's going on. If I was only ever introduced to this, this would never have occurred to me. This would not be something that I would necessarily have ever trained. If I had only been exposed to this, this isn't something that I would have paid much attention to necessarily. And so being able to understand the two perspectives really helps give a fuller picture of what's going on with your foot during Tai Chi training. But for a long time, I would tell my students, they can put their weight here, they can put their weight here, really as long as the whole foot's in contact with the ground, that's what's more important than focusing the weight in a particular spot. However, over the years of training and gaining more experience, I've definitely realized that this is not something that works well, especially in push hand situations. And the reason that that's so important to me is push hands is really your test. It's what lets you know, are you actually getting the principles of Tai Chi? Are you actually understanding what's going on and are you able to apply it? And if you can't in push hands, then what you're doing in your solo form is probably not correct either. And so it's really kind of your test. It's how you test yourself. You let someone else test you as well and see, are you actually getting this or do you just think that you're getting it? And I found that with the weight distribution here, because I, I would try both of these during push hands and I'm someone who really likes to experiment with things like this. If I'm told to do it this way and told to do it this way, then I'm going to try both until I figure out which one tends to be better and why that is. And I found without fail, if I was focusing my weight here, there was more tension through my body and also my weight was shifted too far forward and I would get that sort of lurch forward reaction like we talked about. Let's pull these guys back out. So if this guy here is shifted forward onto the balls of his feet, the Yong Chun point, and he's pushing forward and this guy lets go really quickly, he lurches forward and has to try to keep his balance and not just fall on his face. And that's what happens almost without fail when you have the weight centered over the balls of the feet. Then also with paying more attention to my solo training, I found that having the weight distributed here definitely allows me to keep my knees safer. It allows me to move in a way that's far more stable than if I have my weight here. I'm able to be more relaxed and I'm able to depend on my structure a lot more here than I am here. I have to depend a lot more on muscle and my knees are always a lot more strained if I'm keeping my center of balance here. 
And so I definitely experimented with both because I had the great fortune of being able to be taught both ways. And so I really encourage you, if you have been taught one way or the other, to try out the opposite version of it and really give it a good test run and see how it changes how you move, see how it changes your balance, your stability, and what it does for you in push hands training. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's really helped you understand how your weight distribution on your foot affects everything else that's going on in your Tai Chi. I hope you see that getting this down is crucial to successful Tai Chi training, whether that's for exercise and health and fitness, whether that is for meditation, whether that's for martial purposes, whatever it is that you're doing, making sure that your foundation is solid is going to make everything else from there work the way that it should work. It's going to allow you to incorporate the principles of Tai Chi into your body, into your frame and structure in a way that's not possible if your feet are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. If you did enjoy this video and got something out of it, please like the video, subscribe, and consider becoming a supporting member of this channel so that you can ensure more videos like this will be made available in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching.